and presets. If you're new here, hi, I'm Jake Bartlett and I've been teaching motion designers how to use After Effects for over a decade. I want you to benefit from my years of experience, develop good workflow habits and become an After Effects genius. These aren't your average tutorials. They're a series of lessons specifically designed to teach you valuable knowledge that most people don't learn on their own and take your motion design projects to the next level. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss any of the lessons and get ready to take some notes. It's not that uncommon for a motion designer to have to animate lots of different elements in a very similar way. And developing an animation language for any given project is generally good practice, but manually keyframing each and every one of those motions over and over again is a massive waste of time. So I'm gonna teach you how to save your own animation presets in an intelligent way that makes applying them really easy and can even be modified without any heavy lifting. And you can download all of the presets I make in this video and use them in your own projects. Just follow the link down in the description. Now let's take one step closer to becoming an after Effects Genius. I've built this comp from two assets I got on Adobe Stock. These are actually free to download. This one for the computer, and then this one for the elements that are gonna go on the screen. So thank you to both of these users for making this free to license. If you have a Creative Cloud subscription, you can go license these yourself. I'll put a link down in the description. But this is a pretty good example of lots of different elements that probably all need to be animated on in similar ways. So it's a perfect example for building out some custom animations that we can reuse in future projects. So let's just start with this first window and say I want to have it scale down from the top, kind of like a curtain being pulled down and I'd like to have it overshoot a little bit before getting to its resting point. Normally, I would move this anchor point up here and then actually use the scale property on the Y axis to animate that, but I don't want to use the transform controls. Let me undo back to where we were and instead I'm going to use the transform effect, which is what's going to make this smart and much more easy to reuse. So I'm going to apply this effect using FX console from videocopilot.net. This is a free tool for applying presets, effects, all kinds of things. It saves so much time. Go download it. You can thank me later, but I'm going to look for the transform effect and apply it. And this just gives me another layer of transform controls through an effect instead of down in the transform controls themselves. You can watch the effects of After Effects video that I made explaining everything about this effect if you really want to get in depth. But what I want to be able to do is animate the Y scale. So I'm going to uncheck uniform scale and now I have width and height controls for that scale independent from the transform controls of the layer itself. Now I want to be able to move the anchor point of this effect but as I do that you see that that's also shifting around the contents of the layer. This is because the position value needs to be the same as the anchor point in order for the relative position of the contents of the layer to remain the same. So what I like to do is just double click on these two properties to bring them up in my layers panel and then just use the property pick whip to link the position property to the anchor point. So it's always the same value as the anchor point and now wherever I move it the layer contents are going to visually stay in the same place. So I can move this up to the top center and I can now scale this on the height and it will scale from that anchor point. All the transformations, rotation, whatever you do with this effect will now transform around that anchor point. Now, if you want the anchor point to be in the center of the layer, if you need to get back to that, just right click on anchor point and say reset. And as long as this isn't a vector layer or a continuously rasterized layer, After Effects will be able to tell where the center of that is. That's what the default of the transform effect is going to do. If it was continuously rasterized or if it was a vector layer, then the anchor point's gonna be relative to the composition. It's not gonna move around with the layer itself, but there's a really easy way to get it to stick wherever you place it. Just double click on that anchor point, add an expression to the anchor point layer, and you're just going to type in to comp, we'll autofill with the parentheses, and inside the parentheses we'll just say value, finish that with a semicolon for good measure, and now that's going to calculate its position based on wherever you leave it. So let me zoom out, it pushed it over here, but I've and move it into the center or maybe the top left corner, something like that, and I move the layer around, you'll see that it's always going to stick to that point. Smart. So that's a little trick for making this compatible with vector or continuously rasterized layers. I don't need that on these layers. I'm just working with Illustrator art that's just being rasterized, much simpler. You don't run into those issues. So I'm gonna leave that be, and I'm going to reposition that anchor point on the top center of my layer. Now I'm just gonna animate this to have an overshoot. So I'm gonna grab the scale height, set a keyframe there and shift this forward 20 frames. So alter option, shift, right arrow two times to go 20 frames forward. And then I'll change this height down to zero. 
easy ease the second keyframe and jump into my graph editor. Now I'm viewing the value graph. If you're not seeing that, come to this menu right here and choose value graph, and then you'll be seeing the same thing I do. That's a benefit of the transform effect is that because scale height and scale width are two separate properties, you're not seeing overlapping handles with an array of values like you would with the traditional scale in the transform properties. Now, like I said, I wanna overshoot this value. So I'm gonna come back to right about here, hold controller command and then click on this curve to add another keyframe and drag this up. So it goes beyond 100%. And I'll even double click on that value and just type in, let's say 115 and press F90, easy ease that. And we'll get into that very quickly. In fact, I'm gonna have the shortest distance between these two keyframes, the first two right here, maybe modify this curve a little bit to get into that a little more quickly. And then I'm gonna add one more keyframe right here. Again, controller command click. I'll easy ease it and drop it down below 100%, maybe not quite that far. Let's double click on that again and say 95%, and then just modify these curves until I have something that I'm happy with. So let's play that back. That shoots out, bounces a little bit, and then comes to a rest. That looks pretty good. I think I'll time this just slightly differently on the front end. And what I don't like is at the very first frame, my layer is invisible so that by the second frame, we're already seeing a lot of our layer. So I think I'm gonna change my first keyframe to be maybe 5% or 10% on the scale height so that we see it a little bit on that first frame. And if I move this layer forward in time, it'll start invisible and then it'll pop on. So we just see that layer for one more frame extra at the start. And I think that looks pretty good. So now let's just line that back up at the start of our comp, go to the two second mark and animate this off. So I'm going to set another keyframe there at 100%. I'm gonna go forward maybe 10 frames and increase that scale height to 115. And then we'll go maybe another 10 frames forward and change that back down to zero go into our graph editor and modify these curves so that it comes out nice and strong on that ease and then kind of mirrors that same motion that we have at the start of the animation. I think I'm gonna back this up a little bit more so it really snaps out of place and actually instead of zero, let's again go down to 10% scale. And now we have our in and out animations. I just need to trim the layer there with alter option in the right square bracket. So that's gonna bounce out, hold for a second before animating off, and we've created our first animator. Now, since this is the transform effect, I can rename it to be more descriptive. So let's say overshoot Y scale. You can be as creative as you want, but being this descriptive, I now know exactly what this animator is going to do. And because we set up our anchor point to be smart and have the position follow it around, I could just as easily move this to the base of the layer and now it's going to overshoot on the Y scale from the base. It's completely flexible. I could even reset this so it's in the middle and now it's going to scale out from the center. So it's a very flexible little animator. And all I have to do to be able to reuse it is select the effect and then go up to the animation menu and say save animation preset. Now I like to save my presets under the user presets folder. That lives under documents, Adobe, whatever version of After Effects you're using, and then user presets, at least on a PC. On a Mac, it's a very similar location. But I'll just give this the same title of overshoot Y scale. And now when I click save, it's actually going to update right away. I don't have to restart After Effects. I'm gonna find this under animation presets, user presets, there's my overshoot Y scale. So I could click and drag this out to a different layer. It's going to apply the same keyframes at the point in time that my playhead currently is at, but that's going to give me the same animation. And I can grab that anchor point, move it to someplace else on the layer. And now we're reusing the same animation that I've built and just modifying something very simply to give us something unique. And it's as simple as that to build your own custom animation presets. Now I went ahead and made a few other animations using these exact same techniques. One that just scales the layer up and then back down. Another that just moves the layer up while fading in. One that overshoots the scale and rotation so we get this nice overlapping motion. And I made two versions of that same animation so it can rotate in either direction. And then finally another overshoot on the scale but this time on the X axis instead of the Y axis. And if you wanna get a really good understanding of how to use After Effects for motion design, definitely check out my course, Launch into After Effects. It's the course I wish I had when I started learning with over 20 hours of training and 10 really fun, unique motion design projects, each one different from the last that you get to make yourself and show 
showcase as you learn a new aspect of After Effects with each new project. So head to jakeinmotion.com to learn more and enroll and launch into After Effects today. Now let's take a look at what else we can do with the transform effect. What's so great about it is because it is an effect, we can stack multiple instances to give us multiple layers of animation. So let me show you what I mean by that. Let's zoom in on this first window again and add another transform effect. So transform, apply it. And what I wanna do is just have this bounce the layer to give it a little bit more life. So I'm gonna zero out the anchor point and the position, essentially just zeroing out those two properties. And that isn't really necessary, but I like to do it because then I know exactly how far I'm moving the position when I modify these values. So I'm gonna set a keyframe at zero and then I'll go forward maybe 10 frames and I'm going to shift this upward. So go to a negative 15 degrees. That's a pretty good lift up in the air and I'll press U to bring up the keyframes. So those are my two position keyframes right there. I'm gonna back this up and I'm gonna set my work area with the B key for the in point and then I'll go 20 frames forward and back off one frame and set my out point with the N key right there. So that way, when I set my second keyframe, which will be this one right here, I'll just copy and paste it. My loop area won't repeat that one and we'll get a seamless loop. So now it's just moving up and down. What I wanna do is easy ease those keyframes, go into the graph editor. Unfortunately, I cannot separate the dimensions on the transform effect. So I do have to go into the speed graph. So let me just switch that over right now. But I want it to bounce off of these two keyframes and strongly ease into these ones. So I'm gonna back this influence off on the incoming and outgoing keyframes, and that should give me a little bit of a bounce. That's even a little too easy. So I'm gonna lift this up off the baseline and match that on this side as well. There it snaps, take out the influence there on the easing, and now it's got this nice bouncy motion. So let's just call this bounce Y position. And now I just need to make it loop forever because this is just three keyframes at the moment. So I want to alter option, click on that stopwatch and type in a very simple expression to make this loop forever. I'm gonna say loop in and then go after the parentheses, say plus loop out and then say minus value. You don't need to know how this works, but what it's going to do is loop that expression in both directions infinitely. So I can move these keyframes around now wherever I want, and it will always loop on either side of them. And that's gonna be great for randomizing the timing when I go to copy and paste this to the other layers, which is exactly what I'm gonna do right now. I'll just copy that bounce Y position, and then I'll select another layer. So this one right here. Now, I can't just paste. If I do that, it's going to override the transform effect that was already there. So let me undo, and instead what I wanna do is make sure I open up the layer, go to the effects, and then paste, and that will paste a new instance. So now that has the same bouncing animation, and I'm just gonna apply this to all all the other layers now. And with a little bit of randomization of the timing of the layers, we now have something that has a lot of life between all of the different windows. But with that bouncing position, all of my layers kind of look like they're off center on the Y axis. But because all of my keyframes are set on effects, not the transform controls, I can grab all of these layers and freely move them wherever I need them to be without breaking any of the motions. Again, another great reason to use the transform effect over the transform controls for simple animations that you're going to reuse use lots and lots of times. But that's how you can save massive amounts of time by creating your own custom animation presets and reusing them in future projects. And if you wanna learn how to make your presets even smoother, then definitely check out this video where I teach you how to use the graph editor to make buttery smooth motion.